get started. It gives me, uh, it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Prakash Nepal. He is the resource economist um, at the uh, Forest Product Laboratory uh, in UST Wisconsin Madison. Um, so he has, he earned his PhD degree in forest resources from Mississippi State University, uh, same as mine. Uh, he works as a research economist in statistics, life cycle analysis, and economics related research unit as USDA Forest Service, Forest Products Laboratory in Madison, Wisconsin. Prior to that, he worked for USDA Forest Service as a research assistant professor in the Department of Forestry and Environmental Resources, uh, North Carolina State University. Um, Dr. Uh, Nepal has published several papers investigating a range of economics, management, and policy issues related to U.S. and the global forest and the wood product sector. His current research interests focus on evaluating the potential of U.S. forest and the wood product sector in mitigating carbon. So today, um, uh, today she would be talking about impacts of global forest and wood product markets of increased mass timber use uh, in buildings. Uh, uh, this serves as the Hanover series as well as his presentation for the appointment as a uh, uh, as a adjunct faculty. So uh, I would uh, I would ask uh, everybody to let the students and others ask questions, and then we uh, the faculties would have uh, the round table followed by this presentation or by, followed by this uh, seminar where we can uh, discuss further. Um, on uh, on his research and uh, interest uh, in uh, Michigan State uh, University. So, uh, Dr. Nepal. Sounds good. Oh, thank you, Dr. Pokhrel, uh, for your introduction and uh, um, hosting this uh, seminar series. And uh, I would uh, like to thank you, um, the department and all organizing committee for you know inviting me uh, for this uh, opportunity to to share my research. And also um, considering uh, my um, request to uh, be an adjunct faculty at the Department of Forestry at Michigan State University. So today I'm going to uh, first uh, talk about uh, uh, my research, my res most recent research uh, on this uh, mass timber and its impact on the uh, forest sector. And then after um, I finish this uh, talking about this uh, research, I, I, I would uh, devote some time um, discussing why I'm interested in applying for adjunct faculty and what uh, uh, collaboration I can uh, I'm expecting and what kind of engagement I'm expecting and how, how I can contribute to the mission of the department and as well as the mission of uh, Forest Service and uh, Forest Forest Lab. So let me uh, share my screen um, and then um, I'll uh, start. So I hope you can see my screen, right? Or not yet? So yeah, now we can see it. All right. So again, this uh, research that um, I'm going to talk about today uh, is um, uh, about understanding uh, the impacts of uh, potential increased uh, demand for mass timber in buildings uh, on uh, global forest and wood products market. Not uh, the, the impacts. Are not we are not only considering the impacts in, uh, that uh, we um, uh, in the U.S. forest resources uh, forest side, but also uh, on globally, uh, many many different countries, multiple countries. And um, uh, just to let you know that uh, for information, uh, we have uh, been able to publish uh, this research uh, recently uh, in sustainability. Um, and uh, I would like to acknowledge my, my co-authors here uh, with whom I, I collaborated and uh, completed this research. Um, Craig Johnston, who used to be an um, assistant for, uh, professor at the uh, University of Wisconsin, Madison, and uh, Indranil Ganguly, who is currently an associate professor at University of Washington. So uh, a quick outline of my research uh, is my talk today. Uh, I'll give you a little uh, uh, background on uh, mass timber. Uh, so what is mass timber, why it is important, and why is this research specifically we, we wanted to do this research. Uh, and then I, I'll focus in time on the, the specific methods we used, and then um, discuss uh, the results that we found and uh, try to uh, also uh, link those uh, results uh, with uh, in terms of what implication it might have on our forest and the global forest and uh, wood product sector. And then I will conclude um, my presentation with some future directions, what, how we can, we can improve this research. And after we, uh, and then I'll invite uh, uh, people for a question and an answer. And then uh, after we are done with this, uh, I, I plan to go to the next uh, set of uh, 
uh, presentation few or like five or six slides showing uh, why I'm interested in um, uh, being an adjunct faculty and what expectation um, I, I have and also what I can contribute um, uh, towards the department's uh, goals and mission. So that's the kind of outline I have planned. Uh, uh, please feel free to let me know if, if you want something different. Uh, uh, first finish everything and then we go for this question and answer or, or the way that I have just suggested. So anytime you can interrupt me. So uh, let's uh, start with, uh, uh, although uh, I might, uh, it may be familiar for everyone, everybody might know what, what a mass tumor is, but I just thought um, I would just uh, give some um, introduction here uh, for those who, who may not be familiar with it. So basically uh, mass timber is a, a family of engineered wood products uh, and, and it is manufactured by bonding together solid pieces of wood in uh, different directions, layers and length. So uh, there are many different kinds uh, currently um, uh, available in the market. Uh, so we uh, are familiar with the, very much familiar with the, uh, the product called cross laminated timber, uh, also called blue laminated timber and then others called uh, nail laminated, dowel laminated and mass timber uh, plywood panel. And there are other categories also, which I, uh, I didn't include something like they call it a heavy timber decking uh, and, and other categories also existing, but they're not very much common. So uh, wh why is this, uh, I mean, mass timber, uh, what is it uh, doing and uh, how, how this is going to be a useful uh, product? Uh, so the most importantly, uh, so by bonding together different pieces, different direction, different length, uh, and this uh, engineering uh, gives us extra in strength to the wood that we uh, that was not available without such kind of bonding. So what we get is a high, highly strong uh, material, which is very similar to uh, concrete and steel, uh, but way much lighter than those products. So mass timber uh, uh, can be used uh, in the same kind of function as, as concrete and steel, but with a tremendous uh, uh, reduction in weight, which is a huge benefit in construction industry. And um, they can be used in a different application in building like floor, walls, and roofs, and also um, in a beams and supporting and supporting structures. And um, most importantly, um, uh, this is uh, the mass timber products are considered environmentally friendly substitute for uh, more greenhouse gas intensive uh, materials such as steel and concrete because they, they produce huge emissions during their uh, life cycle or manufacturing stage. So again, why, why is mass timber important? Uh, mass is, uh, timber is important uh, in, in the sense that it can be replaced uh, in a building uh, to, to, to replace like for steel and concrete who has a high carbon, carbon footprint. Uh, as you can see, this chart showing the, the contribution of building sector globally in, in global, global emission. And you can see um, that about 39% of the global emission is, is being emitted from like construction sector alone. And out of that, some 28% uh, or the, I mean, um, out of this 39%, uh, uh, about 70% is uh, emitted from building operation and the rest is uh, emitted from construction activities. Uh, so uh, the mass timber has potential to curb this 28% uh, of the, the, the global emissions, 28% uh, of this total 40%. So the, because they can be uh, replaced, they can use, they can be used to replace the steel and concrete uh, and wood are renewable and they have, uh, high uh, less carbon footprint, and that means there is a huge saving, carbon saving, if you use uh, mass timber in in buildings and um, and displace uh, concrete and steels. At the same time, uh, expanded use of mass timber because mass timber is uh, renewable; it comes from forest resources, and that means uh, increased demand for mass timber will stimulate uh, the market and uh, also help. Uh, uh, provide a financial incentive to the forest landowners uh, and also an uh, incentive to manage forest, forest resources for increased production. So this is uh, important. That's why it's very important uh, that um, mass timber uh, use uh, and how uh, uh, this is going to um, affect our sector. Uh, it's important uh, to know uh, in future. But then uh, why is uh, mass timber uh, important? Again, uh, just to give you a little bit of a further background, uh, we we were not able to use uh, wood in uh, especially in high rise building because of uh, building code restriction um, because the higher the uh, uh, we had we had been using wood in uh, residential construction with what we call light frame buildings 
um, which is uh, about two to three, uh, maximum three, two to three um, story, and would would use in the stories above four, four, four stories was as almost um, uh, not negligent uh, or uh, not available until recently. But what happened is now um, we have uh, this inter international building code has allowed uh, would use even in a high rise building up to 18 stories. And they have categorized uh, building um, by types and, and they call it uh, type A, type IBA, type IBB, type IBC. As you can see, the, the type IBB is uh, stories up to 18 stories. And it, it, the wood can be mass timber can be used uh, onto the, up to this story building. Uh, but the, the amount of uh, the, the wood that can be used uh, varies by, by these types. Uh, the, the higher the story, the more uh, stringent the, the require fire protection requirement and less less the wood uh, less wood use is allowed but uh, wood is allowed wood use is allowed but the, the, the amount that can be used vary by the building type mostly uh, most wood uh, can be used most mastermind can be used in a mid mid uh, kind of mid story about nine nine to twelve stories uh, less than 80 stories so since we were not able to use wood, wood in those construction before that means that this the building uh, the core restriction now allowing to use uh, wood in those uh, uh, construction means there is high potential uh, to 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 increase, increase the use in, in those constructions, and uh, so it is good thing that we uh, use more wood in the building. But at the same time, it comes with some some challenges or some I would say cost or some kind of you know negative uh, side. Uh, uh, there is a concern um, that uh, the more uh, then when there is a huge demand for mass timber. We, we might start harvesting a lot and then we might affect our forest resources negatively. We might uh, deplete our resources. That's one concern. And the second concern is that because there's a, uh, because there's the same wood that, that is being used for mass timber and also for other products like conventionally, the lumber or plywood that goes in a, uh, like a regular uh, residential constructions, uh, sorry, low, uh, uh, a low story uh, residential construction like light frame, light frame building like here they might not be available because more uh, lumber is going towards manufacturing mass timber. Uh, we might have less available for other uses. That's another concern. So, and um, well, and uh, but the good thing is that you know the market uh, the demand for mass timber will stimulate market and provide financial incentive, financial return, improve financial return to for its landowners who harvest trees. And at the same time, um, uh, uh, there is a concern for resource depletion, and also there's a concern for market competition to, between uh, mass timber use and other uses. So long-term impacts on such kind of uh, uh, impact, long-term long impact uh, on forest resources and forest product market is uh, less clearly understood because we it's, 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 mass timber use is just a recent phenomenon. We haven't we haven't been using much uh, uh, before, but now uh, given our focus on climate change mitigation and given our uh, focus on you know uh, sustainability, renewability. We we are, we're trying to use more more uh, wood in in construction and uh, how that is going to affect in long term. We don't know. So that's that's the motivation behind this study. That's exactly what we would like to. We wanted to see um, given uh, we uh, given future forecasted uh, increase in demand for mass timber. We wanted to see how that is going to affect our global uh, forest and wood product sector uh, generally. So. To, to answer this question, we started with uh, developing some scenarios, some extreme scenarios uh, or alternate scenarios, which is which vary by uh, very small uh, consumption to very high consumption. Uh, we label them as conservative scenario, best case scenario, and optimistic scenario. So as 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 the name indicates, uh, uh, best case is something you know we we uh, uh, envision is most likely to happen. Although this is not like prediction, uh, this is just a projection. Uh, for the purpose of understanding the effect. So we are not claiming here that that's what is going to happen in future, but what if what if we have uh, this kind of uh, uh, increase in demand, uh, which ranges from very, very small amount to very large amount. And at this time, we consider 12 different countries, uh, including China, United States, uh, three countries in South America, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, and um, seven countries in um, Europe. Uh, so other countries also might have potential um, uh, increase in mass timber, but uh, at this time we were not able to consider uh, all those countries. For example, Canada, Japan, those are uh, Australia. Those countries are high also have high potential to increase mass timber in the near future. 
uh, but at this time we are only focusing our um, uh, effects on uh, i mean demand from 12 countries and but the effect is considered uh, for all other countries how that uh, increase in demand for those countries might affect the forest sector in other countries who doesn't have any an increase in uh, mass timber uh, either uh, because uh, it is not uh, included at this time or really they don't have uh, any demand so and and, and the, the way this this uh, forecasting or this projection uh, uh, is done about how mass timber demand will evolve in future uh, is uh, based on this something called a new product repeat process diffusion modeling and uh, what is saying uh, what it does is that we uh, there's a model that's a mathematical model uh, which uh, has uh, many different uh, uh, constraints uh, implied there like building code restriction uh, government policy and then uh, market uh, that the train for market adoption uh, historically how new products comes in the market and how it how long it takes for that product to get in the market fully so that all different kind of this consideration is included in this model in terms of different parameters and we relax this one parameter and we see the effects of other so and that's how we come up with a, a three different scenario uh, which is a conservative means like a business as usual if there is nothing much uh, what happens so that's conservative so we're, we're getting uh, we're getting same kind of a use today uh, in over the time also uh, and, and best case would be if what if there's some promotion uh, some some government support or some uh, policy support uh, but not very um, uh, aggressive uh, support is there so that's kind of uh, something something in middle range but and and then there's extreme uh, or a very optimistic scenario where where everything is favorable perfectly favorable and the market is um, uh, adopted uh, mass timber market uh, comes to you know full place and uh, everything and every every construction wants to you know use mass timber so that's extreme scenario again um, this is a kind of disclaimer uh, we don't claim that that's the, what going to happen but we just uh, created those scenarios just to see how that's going to affect the, the forest sector as a whole so again uh, so in terms of uh, you know the magnitude uh, this this graph shows you uh, so the magnitude of the increases over time this uh, we, we, our time frame here is at until 2060s because we want to see the long term impact not the very immediate impact because the forest sector is something is is, is a long investment um, um, again, business and it may take some time for the forest industry to to adapt to changes so uh, we can see the effect if you uh, simulate over a longer time period uh, so full full effect we can see so that's why we, we choose to um, focus on that at least four four uh, four decades uh, from now so 20, uh, 2060 and we see in the conservative very 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 um, small demand case scenario we are looking for about 10 million cubic meter of uh, soft to long more equivalent uh, in in the up best case, we're we are we're seeing almost 30 30 millions, and in the extreme or optimistic scenario, we're looking for about 70 million cubic meter of uh, soft lumber uh, demand uh, by 2060. And you can see the most of those increases are uh, are coming um, from China um, based on our modeling uh, of this market diffusion model, and um, also other other continent other countries also so increase, but not as much as China because China is a huge. So it's a huge potential because they are the huge country and huge uh, construction and going on. If if those construction can replace much timber, then they will have huge demand for those products. That's what. So, but how those number look like in terms of you know the business as usual case? Uh, although it may uh, seem very very uh, strong or a big increase, let's compare that with the the business as usual case. Here, this uh, yellow bar is showing uh, uh, what if uh, I mean the for forecasted demand uh, for lumber without this mass timbers. Uh, in the business, we, what we call it business as usual. And you can see that um, uh, the, 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 the kind of scenario that we are we're considering as extreme, which is about 69 million cubic meter increase in soft lumber due to increase in demand for mass timber represents some 50% of uh, business as usual um, um, demand for lumber. So although we, uh, it looks extreme, but uh, in, in a way it is not extreme if you look at the global level. It's not a very, it's a kind of modest increase, 15% increase in consumption of lumber. But if you look at the individual country level, uh, the percentage increase is huge. For example, in South America, uh, you, you are, uh, we, we are looking for about 20 million increase in um, lumber um, consumption and due to mass timber demand, which represents about 38%, sorry, 8 million increases uh, compared, uh, compared to 20, 20 million, so which represents about 38 percent, and also similar percentage increase in China out of 118 uh, current um, uh, 2060 demand for lumber 
um, the mass timber uh, relative uh, lumber demand will be 43 million, which is 37 percent. And for US, we have 14 percent, and for Euro, 7 percent increase. Um, so that those I would consider not very uh, very extreme, um, except for China and South America. Uh, so, so that's the context I, I just wanted to give you. So how how will, did we model the effects of those increase in um, demand for mass timber? Uh, we use a, a global forest sector model called Forum or Forest Resource Outlook model. It's a, a global parcel equity model of the world forest sector. It represents 40 different world regions, uh, including six US sub-regions and 20 different products, such as lumber, plywood, softwood lumber, hardwood lumber, structural plywood, hybrid plywood, uh, oriented stand boards, uh, uh, non-structural panels, and paper products. So, so many different categories of products there uh, being modeled. And the, the, the model, the solution that model provide is uh, what we call is market equilibrium uh, in the sense that it maximizes the sum of consumers and producer surplus and the cost of transportation in each country. So uh, meaning that uh, the, the, the outcome uh, that is uh, given from the model is uh, a market equilibrium. Uh, so, and uh, it provides uh, projections for uh, future forest area, forest growth, uh, inventory, timber harvest, and prices, production, consumption, and trade of uh, all those 20 you know, products uh, I just mentioned before. And uh, this model has been um, applied uh, in a uh, Forest Service 2020 RP assessment, which is RP resource planning assessment. If you uh, don't know what is this uh, RP assessment, it is a, a federally, uh, man congressly mandated uh, uh, program and that US Forest Service carried out every 10 years, uh, carried out uh, assessment of our forest and land, range land resources how this is going uh, what's the current condition and how this is going to evolve under different uh, economic uh, scenario of economic growth uh, changes in you know, technology or changes in policy settings so uh, this is um, uh, this model has been used uh, in uh, most recent uh, rp assessment so how do again how do we uh, uh, model the impacts uh, in this uh, forum model uh, so it basically uh, in in uh, in more, like all other forest sector model, um, a global forest products model, the demand is being driven by a global, a global gross domestic product, GDP. So is, uh, in other words, it's a global income. So each country's income uh, drives demand for wood products. And so is uh, here we are considering um, uh, lumber and lumber is being um, driven by a GDP uh, in, in business as usual case, uh, where there is no demand for mass demand. Now, when uh, there's another uh, scenario where there's increase in demand for mass timber, which is driven by, um, which is uh, driven by this new demand uh, for mass timber and then uh, also the GDP. But GDP doesn't change between the scenarios. We have this business scenario and we have alternate scenario GDP same though. So the difference between what, uh, the difference in outcome between these two scenarios is what we call is the effect of this extra increase in mass timber demand. So that's what we can attribute uh, to the, the demand. And this, this we call it SIF. Shifting in demand, curve, which I will show later on, and, uh, and just to let you know that uh, you know at this time the model does not consider CLT as a final different product. Uh, CLT or I mean the mass timber or cross laminate timber is uh, is not a different product, but it is something that uh, we um, try to evaluate through the uh, soft wood lumber demand. So because soft wood lumber is a raw material for mass timber construction, uh, we we increase the demand for soft wood lumber to model the effect of mass timber demand. And, and that's why uh, the trade for structural lumber between the country is there, but trade for CLT or mass timber is not there. Uh, but the raw material that is needed to cost mass timber is, is being considered. So this is a, a theoretical, theoretical background um, that I was just going to say uh, b before I was uh, hinting. Uh, so uh, what is this uh, showing here is that we have a, a uh, equilibrium scenario uh, uh, without any increase in mass timber. So this is this curve, as you so the you see is the demand curve, and this is supply curve for soft lumber, for example. And we have an equilibrium, so we have uh, this is denoted by price at uh, zero and, and quantity at zero. So without any changes, and in the market market equilibrium condition, we have price zero and quantity zero. But uh, if we, uh, we if there is some sort of you know policy that that promotes uh, would use uh, in construction uh, mass timber increase uh, mass timber demand will increase and that will lead to a shift in our demand curve uh, and the demand curve will shift right and the total demand for uh, the lumber would increase because 
and the supply hasn't been sifted because there is no, uh, we, we're considering that there's no any uh, sift in supply. Supply is as usual, uh, and I mean, supply changes, the quantity of supply changes, but there is no sift in, there's no driver or there's no policy or anything that will move the supply curve to the right or left, but it's moved along the same curve. So in that case, what happens is that the result is that the demand increase for mass timber, the, the demand curve shift right, and the price increases and quantity increases. And this is the total demand um, for the lumber, for lumber. But we don't need to forget the fact that, you know, uh, we have uh, this lumber also used in, in conventional uh, uses, traditional uses, such as a small um, uh, light frame housing or furniture and other different uses that soft lumber are currently used. And when the price increases, uh, the capacity, the purchasing, uh, the cost of producing those products goes higher. I mean, cost of construction in a light, light frame construction might go higher and then the consumer of that uh, uses now demand less uh, because it's too much uh, costly. So that's why uh, with the price increases, uh, their shift, their curve shift down and no demand. They, they demand, start demanding more. And that's why the court, they end up getting less, uh, consuming less in that, that in traditional use sector. But overall, um, the, there is increase in uh, lumber demand. Uh, but at the cost or expense of reduced consumption in other sector, uh, and that's what is being shown here. So this is the total demand here in the region. I mean, is this the normal de uh, demand in the business as usual demand here? And uh, what happens in the, with the mass demand increase, uh, the price increase, total demand for wood products, uh, total demand for lumber will go up, but the demand for lumber for traditional use go down, but it's still in the net, net increase, we see net increase in overall demand for lumber. And this is what exactly we see uh, in our uh, results. So this result is showing the magnitude of price increases due to uh, different uh, um, scenarios of uh, mass timber consumption that we, we are modeling here. Uh, we can see at a global level, in extreme scenario or optimistic scenario, we're, we're, we're looking for about 22% increase in uh, lumber prices worldwide. Uh, and um, in, in extreme case, and, and in, in the optimum, I mean, the best case, we have 7% increase. Uh, similar, you know, um, more or less similar range of increases uh, in other countries, in middle country, but you see huge increase in China, you know, and that, that's, because, that's explained because of the high, high extreme demand and, and for mass timber in, in China. So uh, higher the demand, higher the price increase. So that's, that's what we, we can see from uh, this, this uh, result. And by the way, this is the percentage change we, we, and a percentage change in 2016, 2060 compared to uh, business as usual uh, price projection. And uh, as I uh, just mentioned in that uh, graph and uh, uh, that demand and supply curve, uh, so the price increases leads to what uh, the overall production or overall demand, overall demand for software lumber. And that's what we can see here. So with that 22% increase in prices worldwide, we see um, about 11% increase in uh, software lumber demand, uh, I mean, production glo globally. And, um, and this is the extreme case, and 23 million cubic meter increase uh, production in, in um, best case. And uh, the individual uh, country, we see a different uh, percentage, but which range from uh, as low as 3% to as high as 38% in China, production increases. So price increases, price increases lead to the increased production and also increase overall consumption, but the consumption for mass timber increases as well as consumption for other product decreases, which you can see here. You see this, uh, this negative number here indicates that this is the uh, decline in consumption in traditional uses, uh, non-mass timber uses, lumber uh, consumption in those uh, uh, traditional uses, whatever it might be, for example, uh, light frame construction is declined, which is uh, what we're looking for about global, globally 4% decline. Uh, in extreme scenarios, a uh, ten percent in for, uh, in China, eight percent in South America, something like uh, one to two percent in other countries. So, um, what is this telling you that um, although demand for uh, lumber increases overall, uh, uh, some some sector will suffer because of market competition for wood uh, lumber between the two different uses. So this in, in this in this graph uh, that su uh, summarized very well here. Um, so there's three possibility, you know, a country can um, increase its overall consumption. Either it can increase its production uh, or it, it can uh, divert, you know, its use from traditional uh, use to more, more towards most mass use. 
or it can trade or I can import if you if you are importing it you can import from other countries to fulfill the demand for domestic domestic demand so what what is happening here is, is this is the case I'm only showing the optimistic scenario here the extreme case here at a global level some one third one third of total increase a total um, target demand is being met being made for diversion uh, of top two lumber away from traditional use and although the overall I mean more than two third two third of, of uh, production increases but uh, like one third is still is being being used from you know uh, diversion of uh, diversion from um, traditional uses uh, which is due to a market conversion due to price increase um, and uh, this is again and the higher the demand the higher that kind of you know that um, diversion and uh, looking at China, China also uh, does that. I mean, um, it, it uh, diverts about 12 million cubic uh, meters of wood from traditional sector, traditional use sector, uh, but it imports a significant amount from other countries. Similarly, uh, United States also does that, and South America also does. So it also import, it also domestically increases its production, uh, also reduces consumption from traditional, traditional sector, and at the same time, uh, imports some other from other countries uh, because. Uh, that makes uh, uh, that the combination of those different makes the, the most uh, most economic sense to that country based on that model approach. Whereas some country they don't do it. Uh, for Canada, because there is no customer demand being assumed here in this analysis, it just produces and uh, trade a ship to other countries. And the magnitude is different depending on each country's con competitive advantage in producing and shipping uh, lumber. So similar outcome we can see also in the round wood. What, what I say when I say round wood, round wood, I mean is first, I mean, when you only chop down the tree, and you produce round wood, and then round wood is further processed into lumber, and lumber is further processed into uh, mass timber or cross laminated timber here. So uh, what a country can do is either it, it can expand its uh, harvest domestically, produce round wood, and further produce lumber, and then uh, mass timber. Or it can choose to import the raw material or the, the raw wood from other countries and then manufacture uh, lumber. And that also depends on how a country is situated, how a country's current status uh, in terms of you know, its technology or economy. So it all determines who, who imports, who exports. It's all based on its competitive advantage. And we can see that uh, the price increase similarly, um, also uh, although a little less uh, compared to sound, I mean, lumber. Uh, the roundwood price also increases. A huge increase you can see in China, uh, which which will drive domestic harvest there. Um, uh, there and also similar con similar kind of a, uh, not uh, as high as China, but we also see price increases for roundwood in other countries. Not only in countries where there's a mass timber demand, but also in uh, other countries where there's no demand. For example, here is Canada also increase uh, some increase in uh, roundwood demand. Uh, I mean roundwood price. Oceania also, the South America. So all, all we say, uh, even if uh, whether you demand or not, uh, the global demand leads to increase in price for uh, roundwood. That's that's what we we find, and and this price increase is is uh, something that uh, landowner would would appreciate because uh, they they have some financial incentive financial incentive to manage their forest because the return is now a little better than the case where there is no not much increase in price for roundwood. So similarly, similarly, because the price increase, the production also increases. Uh, and the production increases either to, to manufacture uh, mass timber, uh, lumber or domestically, or uh, the production can be increased to, to ship it to the other countries. Uh, so the, the magnitude is uh, about so five, three to five percent for most of the countries, or even less than a percent for USA. USA doesn't increase much of uh, its production uh, in percentage term, but uh, China. China increases use because of this price increases use also. And at the same time, uh, they also import uh, this industrial downward. Uh, for example, this Oceania here, uh, which is, I mean, Australia, New Zealand mainly, New Zealand, uh, and it is also mainly New Zealand. New Zealand is a net net exporter of downward. So New Zealand comes to, comes, um, comes um, in, in play and start uh, sending more of downward to the international market. Uh, the one of the most um, uh, import market is is uh, most uh, um, largest import market is China. So mostly most of those going to China. Other countries like Europe also increase somehow some amount, and that's also going to China. So China imports, whereas other country exports downward. So which is 
a good or bad thing, depending on how how do you see. I mean, in terms of value added, uh, if you're uh, uh, sitting uh, roundwood, you 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 value added. You don't not putting value added uh, domestically, but instead China is getting from roundwood from other country and manufacturing there and making it value added more there. So that kind of different outcomes we can see because of increase in demand for mass timber in different countries. So one interesting thing uh, we would like to you know I mean uh, know here is how that is going to affect the harvest, the actual timber harvest. And we see that uh, uh, those uh, combination of this demand production increases and diversion and then trade results into a harvest level that is um, very small uh, global uh, at, at a global level. So in an extreme scenario, globally, we see about 1.6% increase in harvest. And in China, China increases harvest by 7%. Uh, Oceania 3.5, Canada 4%, and Europe 2.5%. In extreme scenario, it's, it's much lower in in other uh, in between other low, other other scenarios of much demand. So the price, I mean, the harvest increases, um, but not as much as um, one would expect uh, because um, there's a balance. In some some uh, some countries that produce more, some produce uh, some um, countries harvest less. At, at the end, aggregate level, um, we don't see much of an increase in harvest. Uh, given those demand for mass timber. And what happens to our uh, forest resource as inventory in terms of the growing stock, the forest stock? Uh, if you look at the um, absolute level, um, we see a large, uh, we, we can see a large decline in inventory, about 182 million cubic meters less uh, forest inventory because of that increase in demand. Because increased harvest will lead to uh, depletion, depletion, depletion of forest stock. What is that amount of that depletion? We see is extreme cases about 182 million cubic meter, but compared to the, if you if you want to um, give a context here, uh, what is that percentage wise? So it's just less than one fifth of a percent. So that's very small. Although in in some countries uh, it's about 0.2 percent a decline in inventory, 0.18 percent decline in Oceania, in Canada about 1.1 percent. So one tenth of a percent. China also, China instead you know. Even if you know it's harvesting, you're, China is increasing its um, inventory or stock, and this is because higher growth, uh, usually in higher growth, um, that is modeled in uh, based on this data available. Uh, China has very high growth, and if you remove the harvest, if you do harvest activity, uh, it is given that there's a room for further growth, and then that will lead to even higher growth. So you end up even even growing more um, than before. Again, the assumption here is that uh, when we uh, harvest a track that the same piece of land is being replanted. So it is not deforest, there's no deforestation uh, being occurred due to uh, this mass timber um, harvest or winter harvest. So that's the assumption that's uh, implicitly embedded in our, model, in our modeling. So when, uh, what it tells us that when the forests are managed sustainably or when we are replanting, the, the growth over time will offset the inventory loss that occurred during the harvest over time. So this graph, the same, so the same kind of you know uh, concept here. We, we might we are, are familiar with uh, something called growth drain ratio. That's the me one measure to 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 evaluate our how sustainable our management are. So as long as growth drain ratio is more than one, we we are we are saying that we are sustainable. We are not harvesting more than what is growing. So we can see that currently. So this blue blue um, bar showing the business as usual as usual growth drain ratio and the, the orange bar so. Um, Good drain ratios um, in an optimistic scenario uh, of mass timber demand. You can see most of the countries are very much similar level of growth drain ratios. Um, a slight decline in China, but way 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 above one. Most of the countries all above one. Slight decline in Europe also, and slight decline in Canada. Other countries they are more or less same. So, meaning that it is being sustainably managed, and that's why we are not getting a huge impact on our forest resources. That's the outcome we we, we can get, uh, find from our, our our evaluation here. So let's summarize this uh, key findings. Uh, so we can summarize those key findings in the four different um, categories. The first one is, uh, if there is a increased demand for mass timber, that will lead to uh, increase in price for uh, lumber, the raw material that is going to um, going to cost of uh, mass timber or cross laminated timber, and. Um, this price increases brings about competition for softwood lumber between uh, traditional use and, and mass timber use, which is a, a negative uh, outcome 
uh, for uh, traditional uh, looking at traditional in, uh, industry, traditional use sector. And um, also because of this price increase, we see uh, altered production consumption and trade in individual countries. And that leads to altered harvest and altered forest growth and inventory. Some country um, lose more inventory, some country less, and there's a, a disturbed or altered balance of uh, inventory and growth. Uh, but overall, uh, uh, the effect is uh, low, uh, as we saw before. And at the same time, the, uh, the increase in demand for mass general also leads to increased price for uh, raw material, a, 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 a soft round wood. And that means uh, it, it is a, um, a good thing for the forest landowner who grows tree. And, they, and, they have the, uh, and the price increase provide financial incentive to forest landowners. And that will help keep forest as forest. So if, if it's uh, economic enough, if you are getting earning, uh, money or earning money from forest, there's, it is less likely that forest landowners will convert that forest into other uses like agriculture or construct or, or, or say um, urban development. So, I mean, it is uh, some, something um, we consider is very good in terms of, you know, uh, environment or, or uh, forest um, management. So, and the next result we can, we can um, summarize is, uh, uh, overall, we have uh, we see very small impact on forest inventory, and this is because this is this is the outcome based on the assumption that when forests are managed sustainably, uh, increased harvest uh, is going to be. I mean, increased harvest uh, loss in inventory due to increased harvest will going to uh, be offset over time, uh, because of biological growth. And another result we can summarize is countries without mass timber demand is also affected. And that is linked to international trade because there's an international market for wood products. Any changes in the world market will affect individual countries. So price increase in the world means if you are importing more, it is too expensive for you to import now. And then that might affect and you start importing less. Or if it's, you are an exporter, price increase means good thing for you. And you start sending more to, to the world market. So that is um, because of price increase, the, uh, the even if you don't uh, uh, increase demand for mass timber in the country, you might increase your harvest and, and ship it to other countries. And that's, that's what we can see in this case, uh, especially in Canada and New Zealand, where, where there's no demand for mass timber at this time. Um, it doesn't mean that there is no demand, but this modeling exercise didn't consider that increased demand, especially also in other countries like China and Australia, I said. And what does this imply is that, so when you're talking about the carbon sequestration benefit, so there is a leakage effect. So one country like, like China, for example, uh, imports uh, wood from other countries and stores carbon in the bus timber building there. But that, that wood comes from other countries like, uh, like Canada or New Zealand. And those countries now uh, have less carbon uh, stored in wood products because that's all going to China. So there is a consideration of potential leakage. We, we, when we want to evaluate the total carbon benefit of um, uh, mass timber, we need to consider that kind of potential leakage effect also. Uh, so finally, uh, what we can say that our, our analysis uh, help clarify uh, some concern or several concerns related to potential adverse effect on forest resources and traditional forest industry of potential future large increases in mass timber demand, as you just saw. Uh, aggregate level, the effect is very low, but individual quantity level, the effect might uh, be um, bigger for some countries and might be smaller for some country, all depending on how harvest changes, how price changes, and how, how their uh, production capacity changes. And again, this, there's a limitation. I want to emphasize again here that, that we didn't include uh, countries such as Canada, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, which can potentially see huge increase in mass timber demand also. But uh, that's why the result might be underestimated. If we were to include a demand for from those countries also, uh, likely effect that we saw on here, likely if it would have been even higher. So, and there's always uncertainty involved in a modeling exercise such like these projections because of the, uh, because it involves a lot of different parameters and the, those parameters might change over time and and there's always uh, there's uh, uncertainty involved. Just to, uh, as a as a as a way of a caution, I I would like to you know emphasize this fact uh, and this is inherent. It's nothing. Uh, bad or, as, uh, or anything like that, but it's something um, all models um, have. But it's still, the, the findings that is still valid and uh, is still uh, helpful or provide, to provide an insight on 
how uh, how increase in demand for master might affect our forest sector or global global level on an individual country level. So how we are uh, considering improving this uh, resource in future. So uh, we will uh, try to you know incorporate all uh, possible countries uh, in the in modeling this demand and uh, revise the uh, the outcomes and. Uh, the one thing that uh, also very important uh, that we want to you know, carry uh, forward in future is uh, we didn't uh, evaluate uh, the, the actual carbon impact. So how much carbon we are going to lose from one country and what, what, which country is gaining carbon, which country is uh, losing carbon and what is the overall carbon benefit. And the carbon benefit comes not only from you know, forest and wood products, uh, carbon that's being stored in wood products, but also coming from the avoided emission, something we call avoided emission, and we are using wood now, mass wood, mass timber, in place of steel and concrete. And steel and concrete, as we know, is high uh, carbon intensive, um, uh, carbon intensive material, and it emits a lot of carbon in producing that um, product. Whereas uh, mass timber is less carbon intensive. We are we are still emitting some carbon when producing this, but we are uh, emitting very less carbon, small amount of carbon compared to steel and concrete, and that's why we have a huge uh, avoided emission benefit there. So considering all those different uh, possible carbon pool, what is the overall net effect of uh, net carbon effect of uh, increasing um, mass timber in construction? That's something we want to, we are we're thinking of uh, getting, uh, evaluating further. So with this, uh, I would like to you know, conclude my presentation and I would like to acknowledge here uh, the, for the Nature Conservancy who provided funding for this research and also US Forest Product Lab who provided administrative support for, for this issues. Now, um, uh, I, I would uh, open the floor for questions, uh, comments. And then um, after we uh, done with this question and um, answer, we, we, uh, I plan to proceed further for adjoint faculty uh, related discussion. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Nepal for the presentation. I see a hand up there. Nares, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask the question. Hello, uh, thank you so much for such an informative presentation. So um, I'm a graduate student at uh, Michigan State University and I'm working under Dr. Pokhrel to find out potential hot spots for establishing uh, mass timber production facilities in Michigan. And uh, in this presentation, you forecasted the demand of mass timber and its effect on lumber price, harvest pattern and so on uh, uh, over the time. So, uh, however, if we look at other side, uh, such as job market uh, associated with uh, counterpart of mass timber, such as concrete structure, we may lose lots of job market associated with concrete or steel structures. And if we look from this from the perspective of a policymaker or government authority, they may not be agreed to give emphasis on mass timber and cut up the employments that are associated with concrete uh, industries. So uh, I just want to know uh, your opinion regarding uh, what will be the economic impact uh, of the mass timber in our, uh, you know, uh, in particular area or in particular country. Uh, and I am asking this because I am planning to assess the economic impact uh, of introducing the mass timber uh, production facilities in Michigan. And uh, your uh, opinion will be valuable for me. Uh, thank you so much. Well, thank you. That's a very uh, valid uh, question and a very good question, I would say. And uh, honestly, I don't have a, a right answer, uh, or I mean, I, I don't even have an answer for that question. But what I can say is that it's all trade up. Our, I mean, government um, or our policymaker has to uh, has to deal with this something we call trade off. So, what we want to value more, and what is the cost, in a social cost? You need to also evaluate the overall social cost. So, if uh, we are. We think that you know, uh, climate change is a big um, issue, and it is. Uh, we we think that it is causing a, a lot of uh, uh, impact, economic impact or health impact, uh, health impact uh, to human being. Then it might be way more, and that's why we might seek for uh, alternative and you know, sustainable um, practices such as conventional using more mass timber in in building at the expense of losing jobs in concrete and steel industry. And um, most probably some, some jobs uh, lost from the rose industry is will be shifted in the mass timber industry because mass timber, grow, growing mass timber industry also means there's growing job opportunities there. So some of those I think will be offset, but uh, the net effect is something we need to do research. We don't know exactly how that's going to um, outplay. So what I can say is that it all depends on um, how we value the benefit of you know environment 
uh, or the cost of environment compared, and that's how we, we weigh the cost and benefit. That, that's what I can say. More questions? Go ahead, uh, Rich. Thanks, Raju. Uh, thanks, Prakash, for your uh, interesting seminar. So one thing that I wanted to ask about, um, part of the dialogue around uh, introducing mass timber is to create new markets for small diameter and low value woods. And at least uh, sometimes that's brought up. Perhaps that's not technically possible, but um, uh, presumably that would relieve some of the, the pressure on industrial roundwood and the larger diameter trade. Do you, do you have thoughts on the potential for substitution there for low value wood and small diameter thinnings that um, and the, the implications of that in your modeling framework? Yeah, okay. I, I'm glad that you brought that issue. I mean, it's really, it's very important. And, and I, um, uh, thanks for, you know, bringing this, I forgot to mention. Well, yes, uh, as you said, um, right now, the, the, it may not be a very much technically viable option, but it is, you know, it is a well-recognized option that people are already thinking of using this uh, low value small diameter material, diameter material to, to construct mass timber, to manufacture mass timber. And that will relieve the pressure to uh, the, the, the other uh, uh, wood product that's, that's going to the conventional uh, uh, uses. So, but in our modeling framework, we don't have something like that, but uh, definitely something we can consider and you know, in model or evaluate in the future. But as, as you know, today we don't have much uh, much uh, manufacturing and company that that does that, but I have uh, heard a few of them now starting to think of you know using this low value material to to manufacture mass timber. In that case, there will be very less uh, impact, um, and the impact that we saw I saw you, we don't see that much of impact in, in prices and and also like the changes in the trade and things like that. Just to to follow up on that um, and. George Burkhorn or others might be able to, to comment on this, but it seems that the, the, the glue lamb that was used in the MSU mass timber building on campus is using, uh, it's not standard two by material. It, it seems like the, the width is, it's not as wide. Mm -hmm. And they were harvesting that from uh, black spruce in, uh, in, in boreal, uh, forests in, in Quebec. And I imagine that that's, that, that they were working with smaller diameter stock there. So Sandra, I, I see that you're here as well. Um, that's that's correct, right? That's not standard two by material for the glue lamb. And I'm not sure for the CLT that's used, that is, is that standard two by material for the CLT plies? Yes. Okay. So there is an example of a manufacturer that is using the small diameter material. Not necessarily though, because you, I mean, when you, I, I don't think you have to use a small diameter tree to mill one by four, for example, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, necessarily, right. but it could be using small mm -hmm. diameter trees. It just kind of depends on kind of whether the value is there for the mill, I think mm -hmm. more than anything. Yeah, and um, I, I would like to just weigh in, based on um, the uh, experience we had with the pellet market, you know, first initially pellet market, uh, the boom of pellet market in the Europe uh, to, to use, uh, uh, to co-fire with coal for uh, carbon emission reduction was intended to increase the utilization of biomass logging residues in the South. But that did not happen, you know. It was so profitable and there was so much demand, they started using roundwood to produce pellet and export. So uh, at the end, I think uh, if this industry kicks up, I think it all comes down to the market price and stuff like that. So even if we want to target the low value wood, the industry is going to go after uh, roundwood if it is cheaper and profitable to make mass timber out of that uh, if some kind of incentive or policy is not designed around that 
So, yeah. So, um, more questions. Still have some time. Four more minutes for that. Yeah, go ahead, Ransan. A couple of clarifications. Uh, first, uh, uh, you mentioned uh, the beauty sector's emission accounts for almost 40%. Uh, you need to elaborate a little bit. Uh, uh, to my knowledge, that is way high. Perhaps uh, uh, the coverage is different here, or perhaps the statistics you used uh, are a little bit dated, uh, number one. Number two, your model, uh, F-O-R-O-M, forum, uh, how does it differ from the four services, all the modeling system time. And uh, Professor Bargiano's global first sector uh, model. Uh, related to that is I saw um, Craig Justin is uh, one of your papers and he left uh, University of Wisconsin quite a while ago. I wonder if that happened before or it, it, you know, you still work with him now. All right. Okay, let me clarify that. Okay, so um, last question, yes. Uh, he left quite a while ago, but uh, he's still active in research. He's independently working uh, uh, research uh, area. So he's most recent work. We're still collaborating with him and he oh. uh, kind of develops an object model and it's more recent work. Uh, uh, this 2021 we published here. Anyway, and then the the, the first question about you know this uh, emission global building sector emission uh, forty percent number, uh, it is not our number. It is like uh, United States uh, publication number, and uh, it is um, uh, yeah it seems too much high. Um, yeah, it is true. Uh, about forty percent of global emission is coming from building sector, and so what is the building sector? Is um, the the construction? I'm not talking about construction. The operation also like when you in the building when we are. Uh, Lighting our, our, our energy consumption energy you know, while building is in use is also the energy of, consumed uh, yeah. somehow uh, yeah. by the residential and the even commercial sectors uh, is uh, part of the figure, yeah. I guess. So that's includes that, but you know, construction industry only as of like uh, it, it is about uh, out of this, we should break 40 and is 28 percent in operation and remaining 11 percent. From the construction industry, so that's uh, that's the, the 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 distinction here. Um, so what the was model the differences? Uh huh. Yep. So yeah, uh, what's the uh, Dr. Nepal? What's the difference between uh, the um, for global forest products yeah. model and then the model you you presented here? Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it is very much similar. You know, it's professional Bunjino. No, it is relied. It is built upon the same framework as uh, as Professor Bunjino developed as a global forest product model, but it has little more improvement uh, uh, because now this forum distinguishes a product uh, of food lumber and hardwood lumber, whereas in global forest product model, which Professor Bunjino developed, had only one category called sawnwood. No distinction between softwood and hardwood. And also there is some more uh, improvement on trade modeling. There is some kind of bilateral trade possi possibility in forum, whereas in the, in the previous model, there is no bilateral. Only countries you know, export or import to the world uh, or, or get from the world. But you know, between the US and Canada or Canada and US, it is it, not possible to model in previously, but now it is possible here in this forum model. So there's quite some improvement. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think with this, uh, the Hanover part, Hanover series part of the presentation would be concluded.